but are you still trusted by Beijing? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs>would do anything against the interests of the of, of the country. Okay, uh, I, you, I, consider, I consider myself a true patriot. Yes, uh, you gave a speech, a luncheon speech at the St Paul's College gathering a uh, long time ago when you founded uh, DAB. That was did I? Yes, you did. I can't remember now. Yes. I was there. What did I say? I was brave enough to uh, raise my hand and ask you not to become, not to forget us when you become chief executive of Hong Kong. Ha! I asked that question. Back in 1992? Yes. And you almost did become the chief executive in 2012. Uh, what happened? No, I, I was a long way from, I mean, I never, honestly, I never seriously considered running for the post. I know that, I, I mean, if, if, uh, but you would consider. If, 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 no, if there is anything I can uh, sort of be proud of, I know myself. I know myself. I believe uh, better than most other people would know me. I know that I could sort of uh, be a really competent, sort of successful. Chief Executive of Hong Kong. I know that. I knew that all the way. Back in 2012, um, you know, some friends of mine uh, believed that I should have a go for it. And uh, yes, for a short period of time, I think it was about uh, one or two weeks, I told my friends, okay, I will consider it. But after due consideration, I still said no. I'm not, okay. I'm not going. Well, would events uh, in Hong Kong turn out differently if a more liberal-minded person became uh, chief executive in Hong Kong for the 2012 to 2017 Who term? knows? I mean, well, such so-called hypothetical questions are very difficult to answer. I mean, it doesn't make much sense trying to answer it. Okay. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, history is history. I mean, you can't. History doesn't, doesn't have ifs. <laughs> What's your prognosis for Hong Kong, particularly uh, in the context of the uh, geopolitical conflict between US and China? The Chinese government, I believe, wants to see one country, two systems succeed in Hong Kong in particular. And uh, when relations between China and the United States and the Western world uh, are not nearly as, uh, shall we say, harmonious as before. I think the contribution of Hong Kong with one country, two systems, firmly in place is still even more valued by, by Beijing. That is, China needs Hong Kong in this one country, two systems set up even more when sort of it has difficulties with, with, uh, in its relations with the United States and other parts of the world, just like before. So, so I mean, you can tell your friends in the uh, in the uh, foreign diplomatic call in Hong Kong. Well, <laughs> yes. It's, the Chinese government will continue to respect the high degree of autonomy in Hong Kong, provided that we do not pose a threat 
on China's uh, national security here. What, I mean, the, the Hong Kong national security law didn't come out suddenly. China took the step of making that piece of legislation in response to what happened here in 2019. And China saw a real threat to national security, right? In 2019, that, that is, well, I mean, I think it is fair to say that China had good reasons to feel worried that national security was in, in danger. So you're not worried about the uh, so-called demise of the uh, one country, two system. What about in the next... No, 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 no. I'm not saying that I'm not worried. Worrying is not my, not my habit. I would say... No, it, but on the other hand, I wouldn't simply naively believe that one country, two systems will, you know, go on in, indefinitely uh, without any, 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 uh, any risk at all. No. I would say, well, let us all work together. All Hong Kong people work together to make it happen, all right? To make sure that one country, two systems will go on. Right. What about in the next five years? Do you think the uh, Hong Kong and, and Beijing will go softer or harder on the uh, implementation of the of the uh, national security law. Why not ask uh, other, other parties? Will uh, Washington get harsher, harder, or softer? Right? Will all those who are sort of not uh, happy to see China becoming a strong and powerful country, what are they going to do? Are they going to play soft or are they going to, to play it hard? Right? It, as I said, a lot of the things China has done in Hong Kong and also to other countries in the world are, I mean, responses, reactions to, to actions taken uh, on the other part. You, you, you simply cannot say, look, uh, Beijing should soften its line. But at the same time, we still see those threats to China's national security existing in Hong Kong. Well, I can tell you, at least within the U.S. Congress, it's still very, very hardball. Exactly. Exactly. So, so if, if, I mean, if the other side, if the other side is taking a hard line. Now, Xi Jinping is, has been saying repeatedly, look, we'll harm both sides, <laughs> such uh, antagonistic uh, uh, um, attitude and, and, and state policies will bring harm to both sides. But, but I mean, if, if, if the other side, if the uh, Americans and, and, and other Western powers, if they, if they, they don't take heed, I mean, what can we do? You can't simply say, look, China, you should, you should kneel down, you should Take a soft line. But do, do you, you should bow to them. Do you, do you see a role or for Hong Kong, or if there's a role or there is no role for Hong Kong to, to sort of... There is definitely a role, as long as one country, two systems continue, continues to work here. In helping to almost mediate the, uh, mediate the situation. You may, you may say so. Yep. Or as a bridge. Mm between China and other parts of the world. We played that part before. Okay. Very well. Well, so much for uh, Hong Kong's international relations. We'll go back to uh, local domestic politics on uh, future political reform. The, the incoming government said they will focus on economic and social development. That's but a wise thing. That's a wise thing. Mm. So when would be a good time to talk about uh, political reform? Will we ever get back to the uh, so-called 831 starting point for u universal suffrage of the chief executive? Uh, Hong Kong gave up, no. gave up in 2014. Eight, 831 is no longer there. It's I mean, no longer there. 830, you see, because the central government has rewritten 
uh, annexes one and two of the basic law. Mm. They change all the rules. So the main purpose, main reason why they rewrite the electoral rules uh, is they want to ensure, the central government wants to ensure that Hong Kong is administered by patriots. Patriots ruling Hong Kong, patriots administering Hong Kong, right? Mm. Now, the 831 or the August 31 decision could not guarantee patriots ruling Hong Kong. So, I mean, I don't think, I don't think uh, we're going to start to, to reopen the uh, con so-called constitutional, constitutional, constitutional reform exercise any time on the basis of the August 31st uh, decision anymore. No, this is no longer there. Okay. So, and, and we, there is no point in uh, sort of reopening this public debate on uh, constitutional reform unless we can be sure that we can reach a consensus among us, right? Particularly amongst the younger generation. Yes. So what I uh, expect in the perhaps not so near future <clears throat> is if there is going to be any further change to the electoral rules, the central government will do it on its own because it can do it now. Mm. After rewriting uh, NXS 1 and 2, the mm. Standing Committee of the National People's Congress can change our electoral system, the way to elect chief executive, the way to elect the uh, electrical seats, um, the way they want. Right? So, so what I would like to see is if the central government makes any further such changes, uh, they will take into consideration uh, the views, the feelings, the aspirations of as many Hong Kong people as they can, various sectors of our community. I hope so. So you still sound with a fairly positive note. Okay. Well, the central government has promised, I mean, not only in the basic law, but in a more recent, uh, more, in a more recent document, in the uh, white paper on Hong Kong's democratic uh, development, published last uh, December. In that new document, the central government uh, reaffirmed Hong Kong people. They reaffirmed Hong Kong people that we're going to have universal suffrage, for the chief executive. For electing chief executive and for electing all the electrical seats. Okay. Right? Thank you very much, uh, Jasper, for accepting the interview from. Uh, this is all mine. Okay. <laughs>